Hey everybody, it's Daryl back again. So we're gonna try a new kind of uh, video. We're gonna start talking about hive components and stuff like that that goes into your hive. For all you new beekeepers that's uh, just getting into it or people that's kicking around the idea of actually getting into beekeeping, uh, we're gonna run through a little series on, you know, the actual components of your hive, whether it be the tops, either your migratory covers or your telescoping covers. Uh, if you go telescoping covers, then you've got to have an inner cover or some people just use like a piece of fabric, whether it be burlap or you can actually use like a core plast thing. If you don't know what core plast is, core plast is what they make like Pepsi and Coca-Cola signs and stuff out of. It's almost like a plastic uh, cardboard. You can actually use it to cut the inside of the hive out and put your uh, the telescoping cover on that and what that's the reason for that inner cover is is so your telescoping cover doesn't get propolized to the bolt to the top of your frame and it makes it harder for it to get out uh, we'll talk about different types of hive bodies you've got the regular uh, they're nine something deep and you got your mediums and then you got your honey supers uh, some people's got all three I've got two different sizes. I got the regular hive bodies. I think they're nine inches and something, or it might be eight something or somewhere around nine inches. And then I got the regular honey super ones. The advantage to sticking to one or the other is uh, you don't have that much equipment to keep up with. If you've got all three of the, the uh, hives body sizes or whatever, and you got to have frames for every one of them and they're not interchangeable. And then you got that have the foundation for each each size and all that other stuff. If you're gonna get into beekeeping, normally it's better to keep up with two hive body sizes or uh, maybe just stick to one. The advantage to the smaller box sizes or whatever is they're lighter when you're moving them around. Uh, another thing for that is you can go either 10 frame hives or eight frame hives, or you can even go down to nukes. You can get nukes and just start stacking them Higher. The only bad thing about doing nukes like that is the higher you get, the more unstable they are. But you can go from a five frame nuke to an eight frame box setup type thing, or you can go up to a 10 frame. I run 10 frame stuff on mine. I've got some eight frame stuff that I bought from a lady whose husband had died that was in beekeeping, but for the most part, that was all medium stuff, and I don't really have a whole lot of frames and everything else to go with it. With it. But, with all that, you know, we just covered your tops, your hives, and then you got, either you can do uh, screen bottom boards or you can do solid bottom boards. I've got both. I've kind of moved toward the solid bottom boards only because they're easier for me to make. I buy all of my hive bodies and my frames. And of course I order my foundation also, but I build my tops and my, uh, my uh, bottoms. And it's easier to build the uh, solid bottom boards than it is the screens. Just because you can build the two sides on a uh, table saw, cut out a piece of plywood for the bottom and you're pretty much done with your other thing or for your bottom board or whatever. Uh, it's just a preference. I started out with screen bottom boards. The only thing about screen bottom boards is uh, you got to remember to uh, put the piece, you can either slide a piece on top of your screen for the winter time or some of the companies make where you got a piece that slides in the back and that closes the screen up for the winter time which uh, cuts down on the drafts and stuff. Probably up north if I had to guess they do a lot of the uh, solid bottom boards up there. But for the purpose of this video tonight or today or whenever you watch it is for frames. Now with your frames you've got three basic styles of frames. You've got these are wood frames. These are the ones that I normally use. They don't have the groove on it that's all the way through the bottom of it. It's the uh, bottom of it solid. Now it's got the groove right here that your foundation fits in. And then it's also got the, uh, I think these are called the wedge type ones. And this piece right here breaks out. Now, the reason why I use this right here is you can use the solid plastic foundation on those, or you could use the wax type foundation. Now this is wax foundation, and you can see 
the metal pieces in it. And what that is is for strength and, and integrity. And I use bobby pins for my stuff. I, you can, if you go through Man Lake or any of these other places, you can actually buy the pins that are made to go in the foundation. Uh, but you can buy a hundred of these bobby pins for a dollar. So that's what I use on mine as far as my wax foundation. Now the reason why I use this type of frame is uh, this is a wedge type frame. And as you can see, if I can pop it out right here. See this piece has popped out right here. And what it is is I don't have another piece of wax foundation with me or whatever. But uh, you slide your wax foundation in the bottom and then pin it up to the top. And the wax foundation has got the little, those little metal ears that are on here. Once you put this foundation in, these ears are pointing out this way. This is the wedge. And uh, you pinch those metal edges in between the wedge and the top. And when you do, you can uh, run a staple or a brad right up in here and that holds it together. Uh, now see this frame right here has got the groove in the bottom and I'll put a picture up of what that looks like on uh, the pictures that I'm showing you is actually off the Man Lake website but if you use the uh, ones that's the solid through here that's more or less for your wax foundation it does not work with the crap if you're going to use plastic because your plastic foundation will actually fall through these grooves right here uh, this is probably one of the frames that I originally ordered when I first got into beekeeping. Of course, I've changed the foundation now. But uh, to me, for what I use my stuff for, I don't buy those anymore. Just for the very simple fact, the matter is, pretty much the only thing you can put in this frame is wax foundation. Because the, the regular This stuff right here will just fall through it because it'll just slide right on through. Uh, I've just started using this wax foundation. I'll do a different video on this and I will tell you where not to order this stuff from. Matter of fact, I ordered wax foundation the other day from a company. If you can see. It's supposed to be heavy wax. You barely can't tell there's any wax on these. I don't know if we're going to have issues with the bees drawing this out because of the light wax foundation or the light, light wax coating that's on here. When you have plastic foundation like this right here, it needs to have lots of wax on it or the bees won't draw it out like they're supposed to. Uh, dogs is burning. But uh, do not order your wax foundation from that company because I've sent them several emails and they haven't replied back to me yet. And uh, I would not recommend them because they do not answer your emails. But uh, if you're gonna order the all around frame, I would order this one here, the one that's got the wedge type stuff in it. And I will throw up on the screen what these are listed as. I think that the wedge type solid bottom uh, you can use wax foundation in here. You can use your plastic foundation. If you want to do the uh, go the route of like starter strips, you can do starter strips in here. I've actually used the plastic foundation to do starter strips on some of my stuff. And what I do is I'd cut my starter strips about that deep and I would put them in, put them in the little grooves here without breaking them out. And then I would take my brad or my staple gun and I'd shoot brads up through the thing and actually pin the uh, the starter strips in there. Some people live and die by starter strips, the all natural comb and everything else. And I did that for a year or two. The only bad thing about it is you can't run those through an extractor because if you do, they'll blow out and you'll have a freaking mess because uh, they won't hold up. Another thing when you order your frames, this is just a preference of mine, but I always order them with the holes in the side bars. I've never run any uh, wire or fishing string in any of my stuff 
but it doesn't cost any extra to have these. A lot of people run fishing string through these if they're going to go with the starter strips or just let the bees build it out for the real natural comb. And uh, if you run fishing string through here, it actually gives it a uh, like a backbone. I've never done that. I've never tried to run it through an extractor, so I don't know how good it'll hold up. But if you want to go all natural with the starter strips, that's one thing you can do. You can use a little lightweight fishing string, maybe six or eight pounds, and you just start here and you go across and down and through, you know, zigzag back through. And when you get to this other side, you can either put a brad in and, and uh, tighten the string around it and then shoot another like staple type thing in it to keep it tight. Or uh, you can use wire. They sell wire through Man Lake or Kelly's Bees or somebody, there's another one out there that a lot of people use. But uh, an all around frame that you can use for pretty much anything is gonna be the wedge type ones. Like I said, I'll put the pictures up of the different ones uh, and what the names of them are. Uh, like I said, there's three different sizes of them and I'll put the sizes up too. But there's um, really with the Langstroth hives, there's only like three options for your frames. But I hope this helps with your frame uh, questions or anything like that. If you got any more questions about frames or any of your uh, hive components, just leave them in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, this is your first video watching, uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell so uh, you know when I put more videos out. I'm going to do a series on just hive components and the difference in everything. So hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all learned some stuff. And as always, we'll see y'all on the next one. So I closed the video out a while ago and I forgot to add one thing. Do not order these. These are plastic frames. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're full of holes right here. All these are holes. There's holes all up through here and all down the side. And you know what gets in these? Or is able to get into all this stuff right here, wax moths and hive beetles. And do not order these. Don't do it. Once they get a little bit of age on them, when you hook your hive tool up under here to pop them out, these ears will pop off and it's just a mess. And then uh, like this one here, I'm gonna use it cause I got it, but when I ordered this, it didn't have a whole lot of wax on it. So I took some wax that I had melted down. It's solid and I just rubbed it all over it to see if it's going to help them draw it out. Cause I have had issues with them drawing these out. Uh, but do not order these and put them in your hives. You will regret it. Like I said, the hive beetles get all up in here. The bees propolize all that stuff together. It's just, it's a mess. Do not order these. Over here are some videos that I also think you would like. So go ahead and click on one of them and continue watching. I do appreciate y'all watching. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.